and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Isaiah 2 verse 2 Welcome to the audio ministry of Mountain Top Prayer Global Assembly with Evangelist I.G. Newman, a man anointed of God to put an end to satanic activities via his global prayer outreach. God bless you as you listen and pray. Hallelujah! This section is a wonderful section. I believe someone is about to jump from one level to another level. I thought your image should be better than what you just shared. This afternoon of this section, we are in for wonders. And we have the friend and the a big daddy for of the mountain top here is in the house. Hallelujah. Ah. Anytime it comes to this altar to minister, I see the grace of where he's coming from. Are you with me? You celebrate God and celebrate grace. Where he's coming from, he goes with where he's coming from. You could see it, you could sense it, you could catch it. And today of this section, we have in our midst, Pastor Jean in our midst. And of the Living Faith Church here in Abuja, I want you to shout! Servant of the Most High, you are welcome to the stage. I want every one of us here to shout and celebrate God as he comes to the stage. Somebody shout hallelujah. You are leaving the valley to the mountain top. Shout hallelujah. Your father is in charge of the heaven and of the earth. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Your voice is not locked down. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I guarantee you the devil who could not stop you from appearing on this mountain will not stop you from going with your blessing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, who is like unto thee among all the gods who is like thee? You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hands there are pleasures forevermore. Yes. Who is man that you consider him to be your image and likeness, O oh God? Thou art the most high, sit in the heaven, O oh Lord, and with thy ordinances that make the earth to be. We give you glory and honor and praise. And by your divine counsel, from the foundation of heaven, oh Lord, and times, you ordain this event. Yes, Lord. Let today change somebody's story. Oh, no. Let today change somebody's story. Oh, no. Let today change somebody's story. Oh, no. If the geographical, spatial positioning can locate this place, in your heavens, you have seen this place. No, I call up. <laughs> the technology can locate the place. Oh God in heaven, you have seen this place. And somebody's name is already planted and established for a change of story. Oh no. I don't know who that person is. But as the Lord liveth, yes. the God of my father, yes. Bishop Oyedepo, yes. will yes. change your story. Oh no. I say he will change your story. Oh no! I say will change your story. Oh no! All the bounds of wickedness are loose. Amen. All 
all the heavy burdens are lifted. Oh man. All the yokes are destroyed. Oh man. Oh the crap bro I don't know what name they gave you that is following you with shame and reproach. After this event. Yes. After this event. Yes. With this seven days. Yes. The God of this mountain will change your story. Oh man. The God of this mountain will change your story. Oh man. The God of this mountain will change your story. Oh man. The God of this mountain will change your story. Oh man. Hey. There are places and there are places. There is a difference between a valley and a mountain. <laughs> you search the valley, but you can't search a mountain. A mountain that sits you upon a hill that yes. cannot be healed. Yes, I decree and declare I receive. the God of my Father who sent me on this mission. Hey. God will give you a blessing Mala that will make you to set up a canopy. Oh no! Jesus. Oh no! Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, please Hallelujah. be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Wow! Somebody say woo! Wow! Please be seated and sit like a king. Sit like a queen. Sit with protocol. There is order in heaven. Hello. I say there is order in heaven. There are places you cannot enter because your protocol does not allow you to enter. Because what I'm going to share will change your perspective forever. I say forever. Now listen to me. I didn't come to preach. I came to teach. There are two different things. Hello. I came to do what? Teach. And Jesus Christ was teaching. And the power of God was present. What was present? What was present? Power of God. What was he doing? Was teaching. Praise God. Hello, somebody. This is very important. Very, very important. Miracles delivered. That is to say, miracles are delivered. But freedom is only acquired by the truth. You can be delivered on this mountain. But you can only access freedom with the knowledge of the truth. It is one thing to be healed. It's another thing to be healthy. Hear me, hear me very well. You have hospitals because people are sick. If there were no sick, you won't see hospitals. Listen to me. This mountain will deliver you. Amen. But my prayer is, after your deliverance, you will establish freedom. Amen. There are two different things. That's why it's only teaching that delivers freedom. Teaching. Teaching. Jesus Christ was teaching. And the power of God was what? To heal. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'd like you to sit down with decorum. If your phone is disturbing you, put it on silence. If it's a Chinese phone, don't put it on vibration. Because this place may be shaking. No. After this event, God will change your phone. Amen. I say God will change your phone. Amen. Praise God. I say praise God. Hallelujah. In the presence of God, there is what? Fullness of joy. And it's right sound there are what? Pleasures forevermore. I'd like you to leave this mountain with a pressure free mentality. Pressure free. Pressure free. Pressure free mentality. Pressure free. Hello? Are you there? Now listen and listen very well. <laughs> when you are in charge, change occurs automatically. When you are what? When you are what? When you are what? When you have the key for a dog, you put your hands in your pocket and you'll be picking a call. Okay, so Benson, how are you? Uh, so, how is everything? How is Nigeria? You are opening the door. Why? You have what? You have the key. When you don't have the key, you struggle, no matter how anointed you are. You what? You struggle because you do not have what? 
You don't have what? The key. Praise God. And I'm laying this foundation so that you will appreciate the place of knowledge. Satan has no respect for your prayer. He has never prayed. He has no respect for it. I'm not saying you should not pray. Please hear me very well. I'm not saying you should not. Please hear me very well. But what I'm saying is that when you know, you know how to pray. Because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above us. We can think or what? Ask. So as far as God is concerned, thinking is praying. Lord, let somebody get this this afternoon. Let somebody get this this afternoon. Let somebody get this this afternoon. Now, there are some doors in this city and some offices, especially because COVID-19 came and changed some mentality. When you get to the door, what happens? What happens? Is it because of your size? Is it because of the way you brush your teeth? Is it your perfume? Does it look for your state? Does it ask for your nationality? Why does it open? It is ordained to open by a key that is coded by your steps at the door. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So after this mountain experience, when you step, something will be happening. When you step forward, something will be happening. When you step again, another one will be happening. When you step again, another one will be happening. On a 24 hourly basis, things will be happening to glorify God in heaven. Praise God. I said, praise God. I particularly thank God for the day he helped me locate this family through the wife of God's servant. Praise God. Listen to me. Don't clap. Don't clap. I don't want you to clap. I don't want psycho fancy. Don't clap. Please don't clap. Keep your hands for something more important. Don't clap anything. I want to tell you something. I have been on this altar twice and every time i leave this altar before in the next year before the first quarter is over something new happens something new happens so there are places and there are places there are places you go you struggle there are places you go you are tolerated there are other places you are celebrated you can come here and say, You see, you see, look at there is not even a she here that in some other place. You see, you see, look at, look at, look at dust everywhere. That is not the matter. The matter is God's presence. The matter is God's presence. The matter is God's presence. The difference between a shrine and an altar of God is His presence. Oh, yes, His presence. So when I saw the thing in his presence, I say hallelujah. <laughs> Every other thing. <laughs> Why? In his presence, the mountains keep like lambs. And the little hills like lambs. Why tremble ye, oh see? And why are you driven all over Jordan? He said, tremble thou at the presence of the most high God. That is the lane I want you to do. By virtue of the laws, I will be unveiling unto you this afternoon. Praise God. So are you set? Come on, are you set? Fasten your seat belt. Put your seat in upright position. And get ready to fly. Amen? I say get ready to fly. Amen? In case you have never flown before, this year you will fly. You are here, you are here, you collected your passports. Don't key yes. There is no visa inside. Visa will enter your passport. But when you are going, go to where there is no COVID-19. Amen? Praise God. So we'll be talking about unveiling the laws of success and prosperity. Unveiling the laws of what? Success and what? Prosperity. And you know that you know that you know that the root from where I'm coming and speaking from is a root of success and what? Prosperity. <laughs> Hello? (laughs) The root I'm coming from, whether you like it or not, is a root of success and prosperity. When somebody talks, look for the evidence. My father is an epitome. 
Even the devil is mad about it. And there is nothing he can do about it. An epitome of what success and what prosperity. I will have no apology to anyone. Mm. If you are angry, another aircraft will land again. Oh. 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 <laughs> See, you have not seen poverty, but by the time he wires you properly, you will look for the code for prosperity. <laughs> Praise God. God's servant is here. Last time I came here, I was pushing my car to come here. But when I'm coming now, when I was coming now, by the time I entered the gate, the wife could not recognize me. They could not. <laughs> Why? Every time you look at your mountains, things the mountains move. Yes, Praise God. Praise God. Don't ask anybody. This man, as he started, I've started since. I've started since, so. Praise God. It is not what you write, it is what enters you. The entrance of his word given what? Light. The entrance of what? The entrance of the word. Not the reading of the word. Not the hearing. The entrance of the word given what? Light. And light shines in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Unveiling the laws of success and prosperity. Let me say this, sir. Success is the foundation for prosperity. Success is the foundation for prosperity. Until you are successful, your prosperity is not guaranteed. Hello? Anywhere in the world, I have never, God has given me grace to travel a little bit. In every nation, the successful is celebrated. Success is a native of every country. Everywhere you go, success is celebrated. If I make an opinion poll, I ask you to write between success and failure. Which one do you choose? Do you need the Holy Ghost for that? Why? You were branded and wired for success. Hello? Hello? Don't be in a hurry to go to heaven. That is the home of eternity. So there's no hurry. Hello? There is no hurry. Make impact. Change the story of your family. Change the story of your community. Change the story of your country. That is what success is all about. And this mountain brands and wires people for success. Yes, sir. So I'm connecting and drafting from the source where I am. Where I am connected. And I'm hooking you up to that source. Amen. I am hooking you up to that source. Oh no. Hooking you up to that source. Oh no. I'm hooking you up to that source. Oh no. From today, you will never scratch the bottom to eat. Amen. Before a need arises, supplies shall be waiting. Oh no. Before a need arises, supplies shall be waiting. Oh no. Praise God. But hear me and hear me well. God package laws for success. Once you are successful, prosperity is automatic. Yes, sir. But there are laws. There are laws. There are laws. You heard the song. And we did that in our early days when we were born again. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master's key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master's key. It all lies. Thinking is the key. Thinking is the key. Thinking is the master's key. Jesus started with thinking. He went on the mountain for 40 days. He was not praying. Thinking. By the time he returned, the Bible says, he returned in the power of the Spirit. 
And why? Success started happening. Thinking is the key. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Anointing or no anointing? Pour a gallon of oil upon a monkey, it will never be born again. <laughs> Hello? I am here to stir up your thinking. Yes, sir. I want to tear tradition out of your head. I want to relocate you from a crawling lane to a speed lane. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a lane that has go slow. There is another lane where there is no go slow. There is go slow where you are because you are trekking. Mm. I'm talking about spiritual trekking. Ask those who are flying whether there is go slow in the air. <laughs> no, ask them. No, just ask them. See, those who are criticizing prosperity is because they have not tasted it. Eat food without meat and tell me whether there's a difference when they put meat inside. <laughs> See, natural laws. Natural laws. Praise God. Are you there with me? Everybody says laws. Say laws. Say laws. Say laws. In the kingdom, laws are also called ordinances. They are also called keys. That's what Jesus Christ said. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you do what you bind on earth shall be bound where? And whatsoever you lose on earth shall be lose where? Why? You have the key. You have what? The key. Praise God. Praise God. Are you with me at all? Amen. If your neighbor is distracting you, it's better for you to relocate at the back there and get this thing right. Unveiling the laws of what? And what? Prosperity. Praise God. Travel with me to Genesis. Because before you say that, that man came here. Did he open the Bible or Praise God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 and verse number what? Number 26. And God said, Let us make man in our own image. No, in our image, not our own image. If that is your Bible, underline image. If it's not your Bible, don't try it. Because the owner will arrest you. In our image and after our likeness. And let them have failure. Uh -uh. Come on, look at it very well. Let them have failure. No, 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 no. Come on. According to tradition, as our ancestors have been saying it, let them have failure. I'm not sure you are reading what I'm reading. Let them have what? Let them have what? Let them have what? Over men. Over men. Over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the... Over all the what? Over all what? Does that include your village? Does that include your country? Does that include your community? Okay. And over every creeping thing that creepeth and over and upon the earth. So verse 27. One to go. All of us together. One to go. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God created him male and female. Created he them. Praise God. Male and Praise God. Now verse 28. One, two, go. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be number two. And number three. And, and number four. And, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon Praise God. 
Who said so? Who said so? Your father? Your mother? Your auntie? Your uncle? Your tradition? The people from the village? The chief's palace? Who said so? Who said so? Praise God. Stop a while. Drop your barrel. Right no, before you drop your barrel, raise your head up and look up here. I'm going to ask you a question. Who is God? Don't answer. Who is God? Because the authority behind every statement depends on who is behind that statement. When Buari speaks, every Nigeria hears. Buari has no authority beyond the boundaries of Nigeria. Does he? By 2023, the authority will do what? Hello? Now, when God speaks, great people of God, everything hears. In heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, and everywhere. So when God said, let them have dominion, Satan heard. Hear me. There was no authority, there was no appeal, there was no negotiation with any whether you go to school or you don't go to school, God said, have dominion. Whether you have a certificate or you don't have a certificate, God said, have dominion. And the word blessed simply means he empowered them to have dominion. How? By being fruitful, number one. Number two, multiply. Number three, replenish. Number four, subdue. That is the strategy behind dominion. And my job this afternoon is to unveil the laws behind it. Hello? Psalm 82 and verse number 6. Psalm 82 and verse number 6. I have said, ye are gods. Ye are what? Ye are what? The child of a monkey is say. The child of a baboon is say. The child of a snake is say. The child of a dog is say. The child of God is who? You just answer. Now let it enter you. I am the child of God. Born again or no born again first. I am conceived by God. Salvation is only a restoration of what was lost. I was created and designed by God. I am designed and programmed to wired success. God designed everything to succeed. That is why a bird does not attend flying schools. Hello? Hear me well, this will help you. And that's what has helped us great and tremendously in Living Faith Church Commission. Because we have a father who understood this from the beginning. Hear me and hear me well. A fish was designed to swim. By design. There is nothing like swimming school for a fish. Immediately comes out of that egg, it starts swimming. Does the sheep become the sheep become, the sheep become born again to sweet? Don't ask me. Let me come here. Hello, hello. Have you seen a baby monkey asking for what is the name of banana? A baby monkey creates banana by as, at, at the speed of light. Why? Banana is born inside. Banana is inside the monkey. Sir. Hear me well. Birds are designed to fly. Fishes are designed to swim. Men are designed to dominate. Where are your born? Listen to me. I want, I want to remove religion from you. It's not because you are not born again or you are born again that you have succeeded your feeling. No! You don't know the key. But if, if by the time I finish, I'll put the place of salvation into it so you understand. Mm. By design, sir. By design. By configuration, by wired, we were programmed and produced to succeed. Yes, sir. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 or 28, there was no salvation there. There was no priest, there was no pastor. There were, in fact, there was no religion. Mm. Listen to me and listen to me very well. This will help you. People are crippled because of wrong teaching and tradition. You were designed and conceived to do what? Succeed. And have what? Dominion. Your challenge now is that you don't understand the laws. And it is the application of the law that sets free. You shall know the truth 
and the truth will make you free. The knowledge of the truth. And truth there simply means goods, laws. Praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am designed to succeed. I am designed to succeed. I am programmed to succeed. I am programmed to succeed. I am created to succeed. I am created to succeed. I am wired to succeed. I am wired to succeed. I am architecture to succeed. I am architecture. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I am a success story. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I am a success on earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why? God cannot fail. Yes, sir. God cannot fail. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. God cannot fail. And because God cannot fail, He's the manufacturer of man. Now, let me bring this analogy. And then it will probably help our understanding. Praise God. Toyota designed a car that they called Toyota Prius. And when Toyota Prius went into the market, the brake, the brake um, system was misbehaving. Not the brake system, the, the transmission system was misbehaving. All over the world, about many copies. When I say many copies, I mean cars, not, not uh, paper. <laughs> many copies of Toyota Prius. <laughs> We're generating what? Accident. What happened? Toyota recalled Prius. And repackaged it. Why? We did not design Prius to fail. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, somebody's not picking it. Toyota did not, did not design Prius to fail. If a manufacturer can recall a failing product, how much more the most high God? That is a place of salvation. Hey. God said, we did not design this species to fail. Man was not designed to fail. Birds don't need salvation to fly. Birds don't need salvation. There's no creature that needs salvation. Only man. Because man failed. That's a place of what? Salvation. Recalling it. To repackage it according to factory fitted design. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Before December, your story is changing. Oh man. Hello, sir. They don't teach this in Harvard, though. Go to Harvard, you won't get it. You can get a PhD and be broke. You can be a medical doctor and not pay your bills. It is not certificate. God has no business with school. I'm not saying that he doesn't like school. Though. School is knowledge. But God is giving people walking knowledge. Walking knowledge. But that's what they call wisdom. So I'm sharing, I will be sharing with you some, some keys. What is success? Because what you cannot define, you cannot attract. What is success? Success is making satisfactory progress in your purpose. Success is making satisfactory progress in your purpose. Purpose is a big word. Let me break it down. In your assignment, your divine assignment. Success is making satisfactory progress in your divine assignment. Success is making satisfactory progress in your design assignment. In other words, God designed you for an assignment. God sent you to Nigeria for an assignment. God sent you in that family for an assignment. He gave you an assignment. God is not a waste of resources. He packaged 
raped you, wired you, collected your mother and your, uh, your father and your mother encounter, whether it was in the bush, whether it was in the hotel, whether it was under lock or under a lock, whether it was married or not married, it has no meaning with him. He designed you to see how unique you are, sir. Every man that attempts to fertilize a woman has a minimum on the average of about 20 million spermatozoa. 20 million spermatozoa went on a rampage looking for the egg that designed you. Out of the 20 million spermatozoa, only one succeeded. Somebody say uniqueness. uniqueness. Somebody say uniqueness. uniqueness. Somebody say uniqueness. uniqueness. Somebody say uniqueness. uniqueness. Somebody say uniqueness. That's why the psalmist said, I am fearfully and wonderfully designed. Hello? So, how many spermatozoa failed? One, do 20 million on the average minus one. Don't give me the answer. When you get home, give the answer to your children or to your neighbors. To, this, to help you understand that you are a unique creature. Salvation only repackage you to the right path. Salvation only repackage you to the right path. Because God says we cannot afford to my reputation is at stake. The devil cannot determine whether my product works or not. That's what God was saying. Now let me make this other illustration. Before I go into the laws. It will help your understanding. When you buy a television. What do you see on the television? The name of the manufacturer. LG television. What do you see? LG. Samsung television. What do you see? Praise God. What do you see? The name of the manufacturer is in the product. God's name is on you. <laughs> see, religion is dangerous. God's name is on you. That is why before you even get born again, the Bible says from the foundation of the world, he had only forgiven you. <laughs> why? Reputation, reputation. He has a reputation. He has a reputation at stake. So, the manufacturer name is on the product. Because you are created by God. He is your manufacturer. His name is on you. Hear me and hear me well. Now, when you open that carton that has the product, what do you see first? It's not the product. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Manufacturer's instructions. Instruction. Wisdom. Manufacturer's what? Manufacturer's what? Manufacturer's what? Number one, don't plug this thing to water, to water. If you plug it to water, we will not guarantee the warranty. This product must be plugged at a current between 140 and 220. In case you are in a country where power is a challenge, add this thing to it. Same manufacturer's instructions. They are laws for the success of the product. We have guaranteed that this television will give you pictures for the minimum of 10 years. For this television to do so, connect it to so, so, so power. In case power is a challenge, stabilize it with this and this and this. Don't allow water to come on it. Praise God. So, our father made the product and directed laws. And those laws was, were given to us by Moses. And they've translated everything in this book. This is the manual of the manufacturer. This is the manual, sir. You want to operate man, open this book. You will operate him. Everybody say, my Bible, my Bible. is God's manual. 
is God's manual for my success. For my success. My Bible. My Bible. Is God's manual. God's manual for my success. For my success. My Bible. My Bible. Is God's manual. Is God's manual for my success. For my success. Whatever the pastor thinks. Whatever he says. When I see it here. When I see it, it here, is final. It is final. Mm. Final. This is what is final. Final. Not what your pastor says. So when he says anything, go and check it up. This is the manual. You can imagine, you can imagine an electronic engineer coming to your house and telling you that, okay, mm. this television now, now 260 with the program. The power now is 260. Now with the program. Please go ahead and plug it and let me know. Mm. <laughs> Will it guarantee the success of this product? No, sir. Why? And the law has been broken. And what will happen? The product will do what? Fail. We have been a victim of failure because we are not connected to the laws. Anytime light comes, darkness has no power. Sir, darkness has no capacity to challenge light. Do you pray to put your light on when you have generator? As I touch this, 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 this place, as I touch this, let this light come. Let this light. Do you do that? Why don't you do that? Why? Power is on. Light must come. When light come, the law is that when there is light, this switch must bring light in the bulb. If the switch is not bringing light, change the switch. Praise God. I said, change the switch. And this is what I'm saying. Success is not magic. Success is simple. Applying the laws that are found in this book. And by privilege of God, there are seven of them that I'm going to unveil. By privilege of God. Seven of them. If you fail again, heaven will flog you. I can't fail. Don't say I can't fail you. Uh, <laughs> what I'm saying is that if you fail again, uh, after this loss, uh, <laughs> when you get to the gates of heaven, they will plug this message and look at you. So you remember in a season of the Lord, in a place and a country and a continent they call Africa, you are you attended mountain top conference. There was a short man who came there. Do you remember him? Do you remember him? Were you there? He said, if you fail again, we'll flog you. So lie down here. Lie down here. You shall not fail. Amen. I said you shall not fail. I said you shall not fail. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. So, because success obeys to laws, we will say categorically that success is predictable. Hello? Success is predictable. Because it obeys to what? Laws. Are you there with me? It is what? You can know the end from the beginning. Because success is what? Predictable. It obeys to laws. When you apply the law, the law must respond. Let me help you understand it. If I... Will my faith stop it? Will my color stop it? You throw it in Japan, will it fall? You throw it to your home, will it fall? Throw it to America, will it fall? What is the law? Gravity. The law of what? Must you be born again for it to work? Why is it working? It's a law. It's a law. It's a law. It's a law of the kingdom. Praise God. That is what success is. Even if you send a, an aircraft to the, no, not an aircraft, a special craft to the moon, it can only stay there for some years. 
After some time, it must come down. Why? Gravity. Are you there with me? So success is what? Predictable. That's what God's servant said. I am not surprised that we are where we are. I would have been surprised you were not here. Why? We have kept on applying the laws of success. And the laws are doing what? Producing. They are doing what? Working. Praise God. Number two thing you need to know about the laws, they are permanent. Whether there is economic recession or economic contraction, economic nonsense, the laws are permanent. Gravity has no respect for coronavirus. or no lockdown, you go up, you must come down. (laughs) Hello? Coronavirus or no coronavirus, every bird is flying. You can't lock them down. Oh yeah, lock the bird down. Lock them down. (laughs) Hello? Are you there? Praise God. So, those laws are what? Permanent. That is why God is saying, Jeremiah 33 verse 20, if you, <laughs> if you understand my covenant with the day, and my covenant with the night, that the night must follow the day, and the day must follow the night. I have sworn to David, I have sworn to David that his lineage will always be on the throne. Now that scripture, when you package it very well and understand it from a success perspective, that simply means that I have sworn that as the day follows the night and the night follows the days, all the laws of success are in place. You can't fail if you are applying them. Praise God. Praise God. So number one law of success is the law of discovery. Number one law of success. The law of what? Discovery. Discovery of what? Of self. Discovery of your assignment. I alluded to it some times ago. You were created, created specifically for one thing. God created you for a purpose. The discovery of that purpose is the number one law. Is the law of discovery. Who are you? If you ask ten people, who are you? Nine of them will tell you what they do. Who are you? I am Dr. So, 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 so. Nonsense. That's not who you are. That's what you do. Hello? That's what you do. When Moses had an encounter with God, he said, Oh, Father. No, not the Father. Lord God. Who will I say I met? Who are you? Who will I say I met? That is sending me to this mission. Who will I say I met? God said, Moses, you have had a, a very hard question. I am that I am. My name is Jehovah. To the one that needs help, I am Rafa. To the one that needs provision, I am Jerry. When I appear to the one that needs wisdom, I am Nisi. I am that I am. Who are you? What is your assignment? Listen to me. You spent a couple of years on planet Earth. You probably went to school, got a certificate like some of us, put all of them on. Listen to me. Put them by the side. And ask God this night, what did you create me for? Mm. What did you create me for? Try to cut meat with spoon. When you get home, take meat and try to cut it with spoon. It's difficult, right? When you take a knife, what happens? Why? That is the purpose of the knife. Every product has a purpose. You are God's product. Look for your purpose. Discover it. No pastor can do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. Why? If I, if I see your purpose, I may be jealous. Come on, what do I 
tradition to leave your head. Hello? If God gives me your purpose, they will do to you like they did to Joseph. They will look for a bit. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Hello? Your purpose is in the manufacturer. Ask him, Holy Father, my loving Father, my caring Father, what did you create me for? What is my assignment? The day you discover your assignment, your journey to success has been accomplished 80%. The remaining 20% is Kuli Kuli, Akara, Yan, small, small. The day you discover your purpose, 80% of success is established. Only 20% left. That's why they say success is 80% discovery and 20% perspiration. Hello? Now, let me help you again. Understand purpose. How many of you watch football? Don't be a shy. I, love, I watch football from time to time. Okay? Take Ronaldo or take Lionel Messi and put him in a basketball field. Who will watch that match? Nobody will watch that match. That is not what this package and wired for. Take Michael Jordan. Put him in a football field. You won't see anything. <laughs> but when you remove Lionel Messi and put him in Maracana Stadium, you will see what you have never seen before. That is what he was wired for. Sir, the day you discover your purpose, your celebration has started. It is not education. It is not what you are wearing. It is not where you are located. No! You have not discovered your assignment. When you discover your assignment, they will come looking for you. Have you noticed that no mango tree goes to the market with mangoes. No tree takes fruit to the market. Have you seen it? This trio, they want to sell fruit. They are taking it to the market. Who the market? Who comes to the tree? Men! Hello? Men go to the tree because the tree is fruitful. That is what God said. God, that is what the word says. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful. He didn't say be seedful. He said be fruitful. In other words, there is already a seed in you that, produce, that should produce fruit. That fruit is your product. It's your assignment. When you release it, they will come looking for you. All of us are looking for Bishop Oedipo because he has a fruit of faith. You look for Microsoft because he has a fruit for the software. You look for Coca-Cola because they have the fruit for addiction and sweetness. <laughs> for those who want it. There are some restaurants you go because you like the pepper soup in that restaurant. Prove of us. Come on, tell me the truth. Can you listen to what I'm saying? The law of discovery is 80% success. 20% is left for perspiration. So, to help you discover your purpose, I'll be asking you some questions. Write them down. What is your flair? What moves you? What is your passion? What is the thing that drives you when you are alone, relaxed, and you, you just not, you don't, whether education or no education, you will be doing it with joy and gladness. What is that thing that makes you angry in the society? When you look at it, you are so fed up. You are so angry. You wish this thing would change. What is that thing that if you have all the resources, no limitation, you will go to it because it will change the quality of life of humanity? What is that thing? What is that story you want to change? 
Mother Teresa was a registered nurse in Calcutta. But she kept on saying people dying with poverty, coming to the, 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 the clinic and the hospital, could not pay hospital bill. One day she removed her salary and paid for the bill. I said, God, I'm tired of this. I want to change the story of children. Before she died, she was given a Nobel Prize. Why? She hated seeing children dying without hospital bills. What is it you want to see change? Life is not a caracoli, coolie, dry wood, dress, whatever is not life. God brought you here to change something. So that is why when God's servant gave me the invitation, I called him a couple of days ago, he can bear witness to me. I said, sir, I perceive that that convention or that event will be a destiny molding conference. The giant will arise. Giant will arise. Giant will arise in business, in ministry, in academics, in all forms and ramification of life. Somebody will arise and change the story of where he is. Somebody will leave you and change the story of his family. You believe it, let your amen be the loudest. Please be serious. The law of discovery. That is what changed a carpenter to a savior. The law of discovery. He said, I must go about my father's business. The law of discovery. I know who I am now. He changed a carpenter to a savior. The law of discovery. That is why your job is different from your work. Your work is what God created you to do. Your job is what they are paying you for. And I pray for somebody. That you will be sacked to enter into your work. You better answer amen. No? You don't want to answer amen. Because you think that that salary is all you have. I prayed that prayer five years ago. And I left where I was working. Today, I'm a consultant to WHO. Listen to me. Job cages you. Your job cages you. So what they do is to keep you there with a car and house and every other thing. And when you are 50, 55, 60, they kick you out. They say, no, we have younger people who have sharp brains. Before you know it, the bills are piling up before you. If you clear that place after locating your assignment, you'll be paid in high currency. Hello? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Self-discovery is number one law. I am insisting and hammering on it because that is all that has to do with success. That is all. That is all. There's no more, there's no more nothing else out of success. The discovery of yourself that has nothing to do with education. Nothing. I know medical doctors who have who are now managers of restaurants. That is their passion. When you see him hold a testoscope, he's looking like a mechanic. But when you see him looking, holding a plate in a restaurant, he's moving like with grace and glory. You want to buy by force. Why? There is grace in your assignment. When you locate your assignment, grace comes. When you are in a job, that is not your assignment. No amount of grace can... Oh, if I want to put perfume, it's a repellent. It drives people away. No grace! Praise God. When you are on your work, God covers your errors and colors your effort. When you are on your work. That is why I'm insisting. Don't leave this or this mountain top experience without locating your purpose what God created you for you can be healed and I want you to be healed amen Amen. you can have a miracle God will give you a miracle yeah, amen? amen but by the time your miracle is gone 
you will come back again and begin to crawl. That is why the Bible God told made a, a description of how the devil works. He said when the, an evil spirit is cast out of a man, uh-huh. the man is set free. No, the man is delivered. And the evil spirit goes, ah, roam the street again. And he will come back checking. If there is no adequate knowledge, <laughs> he will go and look for ten other spirits that are stronger. He said, come on, the flat is still empty. Why? There is no knowledge. Praise God. Hallelujah. But that will not be you. Amen. I said that will not be you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So number one law is the law of self-discovery. Because only discovery guarantees recovery. Praise God. Number two law. Amen. Number two law. The law of personal development. The law of personal development. Somebody say personal. Somebody say personal. Praise God. God said be fruitful. He didn't say be seedful. Be what? Fruitful. Now fruitful, that does not have to do with the fruit of the body only. The right explanation there is to be productive. Release a product in the market. Get something in the market. If it's Zakara, let him leave your house and be in the market. Hello? Hello? Be fruitful. Be resourceful. There is the seed in you. If you have located your assignment, generate a product. Praise God. Generate what? Whether you like it or not. Whether you hate him or you like him. When it is time to operate a computer, Microsoft must be bought. (laughs) Why? A product is in the market. Praise God. Is somebody there with me? Personal development. That is where Training and skills are required. You have located your assignment. Get the right skill. Get the right training. Locate those who have what you are looking for in that area. Whether they are born again or not. Whether they are witches or wizards. Go and get the skill and leave the God. It is the skill you are looking for. Not the God. Praise God. If they want to manipulate you to come to their God, give them an appointment that looks like it. Get the skill. See, there's no problem. Ah, is, that not, is that not to come to yourself? No, 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 that's not the problem. Let's have this meeting. And after the meeting, let me say, if I have time, I'll be there. Get the skill! Praise God. Hallelujah. This is the skill you are looking for. God has hidden the skill, what you are looking for, in somebody's hand. Go and look at him. So when Bishop Oyedepo was looking for the skill of faith, he located Kenneth Hagin. He went for him. He went for him. He said, ah, sir, I told God, I like what is working in this man. Mm. Whether he's white, tall, or whatsoever, I like what is working in him. Uh, I need this thing. Uh, oh God, give me this thing. Uh, uh. So for every Joshua, there is a Moses. Go and locate your own Moses. Go and locate it. Whether it's tall, short, young, whatever it is, go. It is the skill you want. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10 that when the iron is blunt, you need strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Now, I love the NIV translation. It says, but with skill, Success comes. With skill, what comes? Success. Hello? Uh, So success is refined and comes at the speed of what? Skill. Praise God. So personal development simply means invest in your assignment with skill acquisition. Not professor. 
Not certificate. Walking knowledge. What is making a car walk? What is it that I'm going to add in my own car that will change the story of my neighbor? What is it that will make people line up when I'm presenting this gift to them? Hello? That is where the Holy Spirit works. He's the master teacher. Praise God. Personal development. So that's why I thank God whatsoever pushed you to come and listen to this has already stamped you for success. Amen. I said it has already stamped you for success. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you there with me? So, for every Elijah, there is an Elisha. Praise God. So please look at it. Personal development. So I'm expecting that after this conference, you will locate five or three or three or five people who have the skills that you require. Yes, sir. Look at them and set appointment with them. Some of them will say no. Come on, I don't have time. With you. Come on, what do you mean by that? you think I'm your mate? Hey, Joseph, I'm sorry, sir. I will not disturb you again, sir. Sir, I just wanted to say that. Sir, uh, it's like you, you are using MTN. So what's your business? Did I ask you for credit? No, sir. Your, your number only looks like MTN. <laughs> Praise God. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. You go and look at 10,000 and send for credit. <laughs> ah, you just be seated with the wife. Ah, honey, God works wonders, so. Who is it that sent me 10,000 naira credit? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Then you call again. Sir, I just want to celebrate happy new month with you. That's what I just said. The Lord bless you, sir. Oh, so what were you saying last time? Cabra la rada yaka. Shut The gift of a man make it room for him. For him. Hello? Personal development. So you sit down, look for the books you need, look for the tapes you need, look for the people you need. You may not have them one-on-one to talk to you as I'm talking to you. Look at the books, look at the tapes. Sit down and balance yourself. And give yourself a treat. Somebody say a treat. Somebody say a treat. By the time you are out of that place, your language will change. When there is a, don't they say there is a casting down? You will say there is a lifting up. They say, who oh, is this? Is it uncozy? Uncozy that cannot pay? This is she's talking as if uh, something has entered her. Yes, something has entered her. Yes, sir. She's no longer seeing. She's no longer seeing the way you're seeing. Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. So number two law is the law of what? Personal, Personal development. development. Praise God. Amen. Number three. You have located your purpose through discovery. Number two, you are developing yourself. Number three, the law of dedication. The law of dedication. Praise God. The law of what? Praise God. I love the way my father defined dedication. Bishop Oedipo said, dedication is deadly commitment to your assignment. Deadly. Deadly. <laughs> Deadly commitment to your assignment. Deadly commitment to your assignment. Sir, dedication <laughs> will make you forget that it's lunch time. <laughs> Hello? Dedication will remove your remove distraction on your path. Dedication will keep you focused on your assignment. Dedication will bring discipline around and about you. Dedication will make some association to be broken. 24 hours will look like it is not it, there's not enough time. Dedication. 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 They asked Michael Jordan, come on, what is 
The secret of your success. Michael Jordan said, the secret of my success is dedication. Every morning I have to first face the basket 500 times. Hello? I'm facing the basket 500 times. In the morning. Five hundred times. Try that. Five hundred times. Every morning. Every morning. <laughs> Sir, this man can close his eye and put it in the basket. Why? The body is wired for the basket. The body is wired for the basket. Maradona said I train seven hours every day. <laughs> Seven hours every day. He's still alive. He had just had his surgery. It's coming out of it. Sir, unbelievers are using the laws of the kingdom. They are using the laws of the kingdom. We are begging, praying. Kashaku, kakakutu, ishikiki. No dedication, you fail flat. They will announce it to MTA. Come, let religion leave your head. If you have located an assignment, if it is a car you are selling and you give it eight hours of thinking, what will make this Akara better than my neighbors? Sir? It will show. Malmudok said, when the brain has a goal, the mind will find a way to it. When the brain has a goal, the mind will find a way to it. Tell me, sir, you are not dedicated. I'm telling you the truth. That's why you go to the office 10 o'clock. You're not dedicated. Nothing moves you. After a salary will come. That's why you are begging. When you know that this assignment is what will pay my bill. <laughs> Ask the people who are in business. Ask them. When this man knows that if there is no business, there is no money to pay the rent. They're asking him to sleep like you. For what? Is he a pregnant woman? Praise God. Somebody said Dedication. Dedication. Somebody said dedication. dedication. Bishop Oedipo said, I work a minimum of 18 hours every day. When I heard that, I told my wife that, listen to me, I don't know what I'm doing here with you. She asked me, are you Bishop Oedipo? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has 24 hours. Find out what do you do with your 24 hours. 8 hours on Instagram. 3 hours on WhatsApp. And then telephone call the remaining one. You want to be successful? He roll. Lie, 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 lie. It won't come. The devil will be clapping for you. He said, be praying. Yes, be fasting. No, from 21, move to 42. Just move to 42. If you come out of that journey, God have mercy. <laughs> Sir, dedication. If your eye be single, your body shall be full of light. That's what Jesus Christ said. If your eye be one. Now, can you see your hand? Your hand will not do the job of the leg. It will not do the job of the leg. I appreciate those who are um, who are living with disability who have been able now to use their legs to be able to do a few things. But sir, the hand is the hand. I'm telling you the truth. When you go home, try to eat amala with your leg. That will not be you. Man. I said that will not be you. Hey, I said that will not be you. Hey, In the name of Jesus, dedication disciplines a man. And that discipline will choose what you wear by time. Praise God. It will discipline your thoughts. It will discipline and configure your friends. You will easily know when somebody is a distractor and a dream killer when you are a dedicated man. You will easily locate it, sir. No prayer, no fasting. When somebody is coming to waste your time, you will know it. The law of dedication. You know what the law of dedication makes you? It makes you an expert in your field. Dedication turns you to a what? An expert in your field. It makes you an expert. It gives you access to the knowledge that general practitioners don't have. That's what dedication does. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
When Bishop Oyerebo talking about faith, he can talk about faith for one week, no book. No book, one week. It's just that the, what I told you about Michael Jordan, he can look at the basket, he, he, will, he, will, he will be like, the basket is behind, he will just do like this. He will enter the basket. You think it's magic? It's not magic. The body has been configured, the soul and the subconscious know where the basket is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you dedicated? I'm not asking you to answer. But when you go home, find out. Your focus determines your, the quality of your dedication. After this conference, you are flying high. I say you are flying high. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Law number four. Law number four. The law of diligence. Law number four. The law of diligence. Everybody say diligence. Everybody say diligence. Praise God. In that same Genesis. Chapter 1. Verse 26, 27 and 28. God said, be fruitful. Amen? Amen. That's the law of personal development that brings your fruit. With dedication, you bring it to the market. Now, he said, multiply. Multiply. In other words, because you have identified your assignment, and with personal development, you have refined your fruit, multiply it don't have only one create multiple outlet of the fruits it takes diligence to do that be diligent about your process be diligent be diligent diligence simply means multiply your fruit in the market multiply your fruit in the market you have produced one, produce another copy produce another one, produce another one produce another one multiply praise God amen multiply see that a man diligent about his work, what does the bible say he will stand before kings and not before amen praise God Diligence. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29. See it that a man diligent about his work, he will stand before who? Kings. Not before. Now listen to me. This is the secret. Produce for kings. Produce for kings. They have the power to pay. Produce for kings. They have the power to pay. And then be a blessing to those who don't have, who cannot afford it. If you produce for the poor, <laughs> they will collect on credit. <laughs> produce for kings. Produce for kings. Get the kings. They have the power to pay and be a blessing to the poor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Produce for who? Kings. Produce for who? Kings. Produce for who? Kings. Why? They have the power to pay. And when you are blessed, be a blessing to the poor. <laughs> it is the law of diligence that will make a man forget that a day has 24 hours. 
It is the law of diligence that will make a man forget that it's in a nation that there is recession. The law of what? Diligence. Diligence makes you produce what is not yet in the market and create demand for it. Diligence. It makes you produce what is not yet in the market. Praise God. Look at the law of diligence. God told Noah, build the ark. Why were the neighbors saying, Noah, you have started again. You people attended that mountain top something. Abi? Yeah, okay. So what was, he said, God told me from that place that I shall build the ark. Very soon rain will fall. Noah, you're your own. Be building your ark. We are going for market. The law of diligence. Noah was building the ark. Building the ark. He didn't see the rain. Diligence makes you see the future that your neighbor does not see. And when the market comes, it comes in torrents in your direction. Praise God. Are you there with me? Diligence. Now, diligence is working smart. And networking intelligently. Working smart. Not hard work. Smart. And networking intelligently. What is diligence? Diligence means, when the, when the Bible says that the diligence appears before the king, it simply means that his work networks him with the king. And when the king is buying, he has his entourage. Hello, sir. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So there is no king that will buy for him alone. Check it out. A king will always go with entourage. And because he wants to show that he's in charge, he's buying for the PA, buying for madame, buying for madame, madame, buying from uh, some. I don't talk about it. But he'll buy! He has the budget. So once you have collected it, now come and be a blessing to the poor. Praise God. Are you there with me? Yes, sir. Diligence. I know a man who is diligent or a woman who is diligent when she has a work plan. What is your work plan? Don't approach tomorrow without a plan. Develop a plan. Sit down and do a plan. A plan must have an activity. A plan must have time. A plan must have a target. A plan must have an indicator to monitor it. A plan must have a budget. Do a plan for your success. There is diligence. Praise God. You are selling only one small kiosk with biscuits. You wake up at 10 p.m. and tie toilet. I mean, towel on your waist. <laughs> this country, chef, we don't understand what is happening. This lockdown, they really lock everywhere down. This nonsense I know diligence the person who wanted to buy bread at 6 a.m. going for Okada riding he passed the shop it was locked he passed praise God now listen to me you may not like what the other people in the other faith are doing by 5.30 a.m. they are up Meshai is up 5.30 a.m. When you are passing, you see, shh, shh, shh. You are now passing at 10 o'clock. You want to have the same money? Nonsense. And you think God is sleeping. Go and pray now. Diligence. You allow your boss to be in the office before you. They will sack you. In fact, they will sack you. I pray they will so that they sack you. If they sack you, your head will be correct. <laughs> Sir, there are people they cannot learn except by experience. You know? So those ones, you pray that prayer so that it will enter their head. Diligence! Diligence! It is the uncle of discipline. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody say, I will be diligent. I'm serious about it. Say it, say it. I'm serious about it. 
I will be diligent in the name of Jesus. Praise God. The law of diligence. So the law of diligence makes you multiply your gift or your product. Number five. The law of deployment. The law of deployment. The law of deployment. Deployment. The law of deployment. In that same Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, the Bible says, Be fruitful. Number one, that is what we mentioned at that already. That is personal development so that you have food to the market. Number two, multiply diligence. Number three, replenish the earth. That is deploy. The law of deployment. Replenish the earth. What does that mean? Replenish simply means distribute your gifts and move from Jerusalem to Judea. From Judea to Samaria. From Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. That is deployment. Let your gift leave your state. That is deployment. Let your product leave the confine of your local government. You are not a local champion. Hello? That's the law of deployment. Hello? How many of you know Coca-Cola? How many of you know Coca-Cola? You know Coke? You know Coca-Cola? You know Coca-Cola? Are they not in your village? Do you know where they are produced? <laughs> Why? Deployment. Deployment. Interior, interior, interior. You know deeper life? How many of you know deeper life? Deployment. If deeper life is not there in your village, your new village needs mercy. <laughs> but don't mind me, I'm just passing that away. You know, the law of deployment takes territory. It takes territory for class, for Christ. You cannot take territory without deployment. You need to deploy. God's servant told us at the beginning of the year, he said, we will plant minimum 10,000 churches this year in Nigeria. Minimum 10,000 churches this year. We have already crossed 9,000 something this year. This year. Somebody said deployment. deployment. Somebody said deployment. deployment. Territory taking. I hear what I'm saying. You take territory by deploying. You go to the field. You take it. You go there. And he said, wherever the soul of your feet I said, I will give it unto you. Deployment. Deploy your gift. 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 I'm going to shock you now. The law of deployment moves in two ways. Train people and let them go. Hello? You are not omnipresent. Train people. Sell your vision to them. Let them know the product. Give them the skill required. Let them go for you. That's a law of deployment. That is why when Microsoft wanted to sell the product, they designed what they call certificate course. <laughs> when Coca-Cola wanted to sell their product, they designed and brand a wonderful fridge for you. <laughs> they say now only you go get out for this village. No other person goes here. Yeah. I mean, you don't get generator who can't. I better pass my neighbor for you. They are deploying. They are taking territory. Replenish the earth. Replenish the earth. Replenish the earth. Replenish the earth. No more prayer. Hey. By going to the field. Deployment. 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 As your life and destiny. I declare and declare I receive. the local championship syndrome is dead. Oh, man. Please be seated. When God's servant sowed the seed of deployment in my life, I said, I cannot be a local champion. Sir, 
There is a captain of primary school football. He's a captain. In secondary school, there are another form of captainship. Local government championship. Hey! Mosquito! Mosquito! He's captain. Hey! Okocha! That's national team. He's a captain. But there is a level of your mercy. Come on! He's captain of captains. I you know what I'm saying? Which one do you want? You are not thinking. Deployment. Deployment. You may not like Dangote, but the sermon is in your village. <laughs> yes! The laws of the kingdom are no respecter for any man. Anyone who obeys the Lord, the Lord will respond. You are selling my money. It's not even in your neighbor's house. My 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 my. It's not in your neighbor's house. There is a sister. I've forgotten her name. She took my money to the White House in the days of Obama. Michelle Obama tested the my my and the, and said that this must be breakfast included in the breakfast meal every day. My my left Nigeria, entire White House. Deployment. Deployment. Deployment, deployment, deployment. Whatsoever is keeping you on the local championship is cost. Oh man! Please be seated. Hello? Jesus started in a manger. <laughs> He's not returning in a manger. Oh. <laughs> Sir, he started in a manger. He ended up in the upper room. <laughs> he standed up where? In the upper room. When it was time to get, uh, what do you call it? Um, a cult. He chose the one that had, nobody rode on it. Praise God. Hello? Change your thinking. Tell your neighbor, think big. Put God under pressure. Come on, say it. Tell your neighbor, put God under pressure. Put God under pressure. That's an understatement. Have you seen children? Hello? Have you seen children? So, Jackson, what do you want? Daddy, I want an aeroplane. <laughs> Hello? What did he say? I want aeroplane. Daddy, buy me that car. Daddy, buy me that car. Why? Thinking. 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 Sir, we have prayed enough in tongues. Let's talk sense. Let's talk sense to our environment. Let's talk sense to our environment. God is generating saviors. Not in the likeness of Jesus, but solution providers. People who will master the economy. Solution providers. What solution are you bringing in the market? You are praying 24. You started this year 21 days. You are 40 days. What is the product? What is the product? I'm not saying you should not stop praying. You should stop praying. No! What I'm saying is that the church is about solution. Church is a solution center. Church is what? Solution. What is church? Solution. What is church? Solution you better answer me. What is church? Solution In other words, once I'm coming out of church, my church, my life must be better than that of my neighbor. Hello? I must leave the church with a branded mind that will give solution to my environment. Hello? Praise God. The law of deployment. So the Bible says, and God said, replenish the earth. 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 Remember, because he said replenish the earth, that simply means scale up your enterprise. Your enterprise. Scale it up. Take territories. 
Move from local government to the state. Take territories. Move from the state to the region. Take territories. Move from the region to the country. Take territories. From there, move to West Africa. From there, move. Hello? The part of the righteous is that what? A shining light. You shine it more and more until a perfect day. Hello? Praise God. You are in an office, nobody can feel your impact. You are a disgrace. I'm saying it with all sense of responsibility. You are a disgrace. They must feel your impact. Joseph was in the prison. Even the prison world that knew it. Even the prison world that knew it. Praise God. Are you there with me? The prison world that knew it. That Look, there is a Joseph here. <laughs> In the days of Daniel, they say, look, <laughs> king, nobody can give you the mystery. Nobody can deceive this one. But there is a man in the land. He has the spirit of the Holy God. Only him can give you answer to this matter. Call for Daniel. Call for Daniel. They will call you this month. Oh, I say they will call you this month. Oh, I say they will call you this month. Oh, I say they will call you this month. Oh, I say they will call you this month. Oh, Anything be cloudy or rising up is shattered on this mountain. Oh, In the name of Jesus. Oh, the law of deployment. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. The law of deployment. So number one, the law of self-discovery. Number two, the war, the law of personal development. Number three, the law of dedication. Number four, the law of diligence. Number five, the law of praise God. Number six, Number six, the law of dominion. The law of dominion. In that Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28, the Bible says, have dominion. In other words, it now said, subdue the earth. It didn't say subdue man. If you want to subdue man, it's witchcraft. And every witchcraft must do what? Yeah, every witch must do what? That. Simple. Mm. God did not send you to subdue men. Mm. He said subdue the earth. the earth. By what? By your product. By your product. Now, sub, sub, uh, to subdue there simply means to strategically control the market with policies and procedures that generate profit to your assignment. Strategically control the market. That will say they move you from the bench and take you to the board. You are in the boardroom seated, determining the price of oil. Hello, come on. <laughs> if somebody listens to what I'm saying, if you are into farming, when it is time to determine the price of corn, they will call for you. Come on, we have a problem with corn. Supply and provision. Please, we know you are the major marketer. Please, can you reduce the price? That is subduing the earth. That is subduing the earth. It's not about rolling over men and, and, and abusing men and then sitting over the, the inheritance. That's not it. It's controlling policies, regulating procedures by your gift. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say praise God. Hallelujah. I say praise God. Hallelujah. See, whether you like it or not, there's no major decision that can be taken in this country without calling Bishop Oedipo. Or without calling Papa Adeboe. So you can't, there's nothing. These are people who have deployed their gift and now are subduing the earth by the giftings of God. So to have dominion simply means subdue, have control. Control the market with your product, with your thinking, with the giftings, by the assignment that God has given to you. Now, please be seated. Zuckerberg is managing Facebook. Hello? 
if he says that I'm going to change security, <laughs> your Facebook account will be shaky. <laughs> Hello? Are you there with me? Your Facebook account will be doing what? It will be shaking. He's controlling you from where? From the US. Subduing you from the US. With these gifts. Now, how much more you and I loaded with the Holy Ghost? Ah, God have mercy on me. I'm not saying about you. I'm talking about me. God have mercy on me. Change my story. Let my gift subdue the earth. Let my gift subdue. Praise God. Hallelujah. Have control over it. Do you know why Satan is afraid when a new church is planted? Because the giftings of the church will subdue the environment. The light of the gospel subdues the environment. It annihilates and annihilates the operation of darkness in that environment. That is why he's fighting the church to and name. For light shines in darkness. And darkness comes. In other words, darkness has no capacity to stop it. That's the meaning. Praise God. The law of dominion. The law of dominion. Remember where we started. Remember where we started. It is starting with the law of what? Discovery. That's what I said. Success is 80% discovery and 20% perspiration. Every other thing that we've been discussing there from law 2 to law number 6 and 7 where we're going to end now is what? Perspiration. What you are doing because you have discovered your gift. Are you there with me? Because of what you have discovered. Praise God. Because of what you have discovered. I read the story of Microsoft and Bill Gates. Microsoft Drop after university, and he told IBM, working with IBM, and told IBM, Look, we have been writing this DOS, 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 DOS program. And I have the impression that it is too complicated for a routine application. I have a suggestion. Let's work all this in the background and generate icons that will initiate and activate operations of the same programs. In other words, you don't need to be dust this, this, dust that, that, dust, dust, dust. No, that is too much for a client. What a client is, will have is the pleasure of clicking into an icon and seeing the answers. They say you are stupid, you are mad, we don't need you here. Programming is for programmers. This is technology, this is science. He said, thank you very much. He left them. He went into his garage. Everybody say garage. garage. Everybody say garage. Everybody say garage. garage. Microsoft did not start in a plaza. He started in a garage. He sat down and said, okay, if I want to do, I ask, if I put this on the desktop, what are the laws? I know what it takes to program, but I need an icon that somebody who is illiterate will just click on this thing and have the answer. They don't need X times Z plus this one. The bad bad. Formula can paralyze in somebody's life. Let's give them answers. That was the beginning of Microsoft. Immediately the icons appeared. He said, yes! That is it! I want this to be in every house in the world. From the discovery to personal development to dedication to diligence he's deploying, he's subduing. Now! You can't do without him. You may hate him. You can't do without him. I hear what I'm saying. You may hate him but you can't do without him. That is the law of deployment. Now the final law and law number seven is the law of devotion. The law of what? Devotion. The law of devotion must make you remember your source. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. But you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he that giveth the power to succeed. Power is nothing but capacity plus ability. Power is what? Capacity plus ability. You shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he that giveth the power to succeed. But that scripture says to get wealth. We 
which is also another phrase for prosperity. You shall remember the Lord your God. Those of them who are in cultism, they remember the God. They go back to the God and worship the God for the new car, for the new business breakthrough, for the new promotion. They remember the God in the court. If you miss the service, they give you penalty for it. They know it. Because when the devil gives you a cup, he will ask for your head. He gives you a shoe, he will ask for your leg. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee what? Power. In other words, capacity and ability to succeed. You shall remember him. How will you remember him? In worship and sacrifice. Worship and sacrifice. God is not asking anything. He does not want to share his glory with any other man or other God or any other system. You shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he that giveth the power to succeed. The law of devotion takes you back to your altar. That is why in the Old Testament, everywhere there was a miracle. You see the patriarch setting an altar. And Abraham set an altar and prayed unto the Lord his God. And Jacob set an altar. He said, I know and didn't know that God is here. For us angels are ascending and descending. Today, the altar is in the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hello? Are you there with me? Yes. Remember your source if you don't want your resources to dry up. Remember your source. Now, listen to me. How many of you have had this experience before as I begin to run? Oh. When they take water from your flat, from the source, you still have some water coming. Hello? When they stop the source, you still have some water coming. In fact, you may be taking your bath and say, stupid people, don't mind them. Water is still flowing. Water is still flowing. By the time you put soap finish, what do you want to... Then you know that they've taken water. <laughs> that is what happens when a man forgets his source. He will still be celebrating water that is finished. <laughs> And before you know it, hey, God, I don't know what's happening. You have forgotten your source. And therefore, the flow will stop. Remember your source. That's why people have breakthrough today. And tomorrow there's dryness all over the place. They have forgotten the source. They've broken the law of faithfulness. And when you break the law, the serpent must bite. Laws are simple. When God says, I know the end from the beginning, simply because he knows the law. The inside the law is the penalty for breaking the law. This is simple. Inside the law is, the law is inbuilt with what? With judgment inside. So he has no problem. So he's not a struggle. Hello? Praise God. You refuse to remember your source by paying your tithe. Very simple. The law itself will take its course. You will come back begging like a child. Daddy, my biscuit, my biscuit, my biscuit. Stop crying. Go back to the basics. The law you broke. Remain, I mean, man the altar. Ask for mercy. And then move and apply the law again. Study. I'm sorry. This is it. I've returned. Until you return, you are not restored. You need to return. You need to return. Those seven laws are applicable anywhere in the world. Whether you are a Chinese, whether you are a Japanese, whether you are coming from a Kotek or you are coming from a Zika somewhere, or you are coming from where, the laws are there. So that is why he told Joshua, Joshua, Joe, 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 did you see me with Moses? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night to observe and to do as it is written therein. Then 
You will make your way. I will not make it. You, 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 you will make, not I. You will make your way. Aha! Good! Rise up on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like you to take a deep breath in and out. In the next five minutes, I'll come down from the altar. I'd like you to take a breath in and out. Stop religion. You don't drive on the road with religion. You drive on the road with laws. Praise God. You cannot put orange juice in a car and expect it to be on the road. What makes a car wrong is premium spirit. If you put kerosene, it's all wrong. Hello? Christianity must not be complicated. It's simple. Hello? The devil is making it complicated. Because he knows that the day you obey the law, you are free. When Jesus Christ was talking about the knowledge of the truth, he was talking about the knowledge of the laws. He said, it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. What are the mysteries of the kingdom? The laws of the kingdom. If it is success and prosperity, hear this and hear this very well. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Whether you're in Japanese, whether you're from anywhere. What I want to pray with you this afternoon is for the grace to obey the law. Lord, give me the grace to obey the law. Lord, give me the grace. We've been made love and blessed. For additional information, contact us on 0803. 447-2328 or 0701-366-2001 Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at IG Newman For days of activities We meet every first and third Saturdays of the month at 